Welcome to the next in this series of podcasts on Oracle's in database SQL analytics. My name is Keith Laker and I'm a senior principal product manager for data warehousing and big data at Oracle. In an earlier podcast, we introduced a concept called Windows. And in this podcast, we're going to look a little deeper at how analytical windows actually work. As we discussed in an earlier podcast, windows can be divided into two distinct types. Where we have dense data, we can use physical windows. And where we have sparse data, for example, in a time dimension, we might not have sales for every day in the year due to public holidays, we need to use logical windows. So let's look at some examples of how these types of windows are used. In this first example, we have a dense data set. You can see that we have a stock price for each day. We're going to calculate an average price based on the current row plus the three preceding rows. So let's see how this works. The first point to note is that we're ordering data within the window by the timestamp. So we can simply move back three rows because we have a dense data set with all the required time periods and the data is correctly sorted. So we can infer that the three preceding rows will correspond exactly to the required dates. For the first row, the calculation is obviously relatively simple. Price for row one, divide it by one. For the next row, our window is expanded to two rows. So we add the price from row one to the price in row two, divide by two, and we get the average. This process continues until we get to the fourth row. This is where our window is now at its maximum size, the current row plus three preceding rows. So when we move to the next row, our sliding window of four rows now starts at row two and stops at row five. The window for computing the average continues to slide through the data until we reach the end of the table. That simple example hopefully explains how physical windows work with dense data. Note that the physical window is a fixed size. So how do we manage data that is sparse and or contains duplicates? The first point to note is that we've changed the syntax of our over clause. The ordering is still the same using the timestamp column, but the shape of the window has changed so that we're now building a window based not on rows, but on an interval of three days. And we can use other types of time periods if we need to, such as months, quarters or years. This is subtly different to the previous example, because here it's not possible to just step back three rows with the assumption this will contain the required data. Looking at the table, if the current row was 7th of April, then stepping back three rows would mean including data from April the 3rd, and that's outside the time limit defined in our interval clause. Therefore, we're going to use the built-in time intelligence and set the interval as three days and let the database automatically size the window according to the day within our timestamp. So where we have duplicate data, you can see that the database calculates the final average across the duplicate rows and then applies that average to all of those duplicate rows. To compute the moving average for the 3rd of April, we need to include the duplicate rows for both the 1st of April and the 3rd of April. And again, the average for the duplicate rows is based on the final average for all the rows within the window, which is then applied to the required rows. When we get to the 5th of April, the range of three days only covers the 5th of April to the 3rd of April. And note it does not include the 1st of April, which is as expected. So as you can see in this example, the size of the logical window is actually dynamic. It's changing to match the data set. The analytical window feature allows us to calculate many different types of calculations, such as moving average, centered averages, cumulative running totals. And we can use the time aware logical window to ensure we include the correct data points in our calculations. So let's look at an example of using some of these features. 
In a single query, we can actually create aggregates at different levels. And in this example, we're reporting the sales within each region by each salesperson, the total sales for each region, and the total sales for all region. So you can see that we have three different levels of aggregation within the same query. The first analytical function groups the data by region to create a regional total for sales. The second analytical function creates a grand total for sales. The use of the blank over syntax generates the final table a total across the whole data set. Now we have our basic analytical data set. We can actually apply additional filters over that result set to get more insight. And this highlights one of the key benefits of using analytical SQL is that you can use any of the other SQL features and functions alongside these analytical SQL features and functions. So using the different sales totals, we can now easily search for regions that are contributing more than 50% of total sales and where salespeople are contributing more than 18% of regional sales. And to do that, we just add our WHERE clause and filter the result set. So the first step is to find the rows contributing more than 50% of total sales. Then we need to find salespeople who are contributing more than 18% of regional sales, which limits our result set to just the first two rows of our data set. So I hope these examples have given you some insight into the real power of using analytical windows and how they can be used to create different levels of aggregation within the same query. Finally, we've shown how you can use those analytical features to drive very sophisticated